Hey, welcome to How to Teach Syllable Types and Syllable Division. Today I'm going to walk you through how I do it. A lot of people have ways that they teach syllable types that are different than what I do. It really doesn't matter how you teach it, it matters that you teach it. So today I'm going to show you how I do um, phonological division and morphological division. So let's get started. The six syllable types are Opened, closed, vowel consonant E, sometimes known as silent E, vowel pairs, R controls, and consonant LE. The acronym CLOVER is used to describe all six of the syllable types we're going to be talking about today. Syllable division patterns are also equally important, so we want our students to understand these division patterns. We're going to look at vowel, consonant, vowel, vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel, the two ways to divide vowel, consonant, vowel, vowel, vowel division, and division between affixes, roots, and base words. When is a student ready for syllable work? I teach my students syllable work when they encounter multisyllabic words in contextual reading and they are unable to read them. So, never assume. When we get started teaching this, we should never, ever assume. So, we're going to start with, what does your student know? We're going to ask your student, what is a vowel? What is a consonant? This is so important that they understand the difference. We're going to talk about Y as a vowel and W as a vowel when it appears in vowel pairs. Does your student know what a syllable is? So if we tell them we're going to divide syllables, does that even mean anything to them? We're going to talk about syllables um, in um, phonological awareness. So what I mean by that is let's look at um, syllables when we're dividing them and the student is not seeing them written. So we're going to count syllables. Can your student isolate syllables orally? So I want them to be able to tap out the number of syllables that are in their names. So let's start by putting their hand on the table and we're going to count out their names. So my name, Pamela, Pam, a la. I can watch three fingers go down and I can see that I have three syllables. I find that a lot easier than clapping. Clapping, you've got a lot going on. You got to count the syllables and you have to say them at the same time. So I just like to be able to look down at the fingers. Now, can they tap out multisyllabic words? If they can, then you're ready to tell them how we're going to break those words apart. So we're going to also do some manipulation of syllables without the use of text, more of that. So let's use um, chips or little tokens for them to move around. So uh, poker chips, paper clips, pennies, anything that you want to use. So put some on the table and we're going to sound out the word vacation. So I'm going to drop down for my students vacation. And facing them, they're going to see the first syllable, vacation. So they now see three items in front of them. We're going to um, remove one of the symbols. So I might pull up the vey part and we're going to say, vacation. I'm going to put it back and I'm going to add a chip and I'm going to say, vacationing. I'm going to go through, I'm going to exchange some syllables. I might take ing away and I'm going to drop down with um, ed, so vacationed. Well, actually, it's not ed, it's duh vacationed. So we are going to move those syllables around. So let's go back to vacation, vacation. And now let's get rid of the ve. We've got cation, put ve back and let's move it to the end. And now we've got cation ve. All right. So tell your student each syllable must contain at least one vowel. There are six syllable types and there's patterns that we follow to divide words. So we want them to know that we're just not going to randomly go in and divide the word. We're going to show them how they do it so that the word becomes syllable types that they can identify and sound out. So let's start with closed syllables. Closed syllables usually have short vowels. I say usually because think of the iodine old oast group. 
Those words are definitely closed syllables and they have long vowels or syllable types that have schwa sounds in it. So we're going to think that closed syllables can have long vowels or schwa. But let's start out with just teaching them that they have short vowels. Closed syllables end in one or more consonants. A good visual, I find, is to lay out some chips with all the vowels on one side and a consonant on the other side. I'm going to pull that consonant down and I'm going to have them say the short vowel sounds and we're going to say at, at, it, at, at, and it. I can put in another consonant and we can maybe put in an M and go am, m, m, um, um, m. If you haven't taught Y as a vowel, now is an excellent time to teach that. So let's look at some closed syllables. Vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel is a great way to introduce closed syllables into words. So how does that happen? So let's look at a word, tidbit. I asked a student to identify the vowels. Now I'm gonna ask them to start with the first vowel and label it with a V and the consonants with a C. So they're gonna go vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel. And now I'm going to tell them we're dividing between the two consonants, which leaves a closed syllable and a closed syllable, which I've labeled with C's. Now we've got two C's going on here, one for consonants and one for closed. It's really important that your students understand the difference because this can get confusing and it's caught up a lot of students for me where I've had to go back and go back to just really basic, what's a consonant, what's a closed syllable, and let them see how I'm identifying one differently than I'm identifying the other. All right, this is what it looks like when it's all said and done. So this is not the only time that I would do it. I would have them do it a lot. So I would find a list of words that have bunch of closed syllables in them and I would just have them divide away and read the words. Divide, label, read. I use word books all the time. I'm not a hu huge fan of downloads. I tend to not keep them organized enough so word books are great for me. I can just grab my word books and my students divide away and I erase them. All right, another place where we uh, close syllables appear often, other syllables appear too, but this is a good one to teach after this, would be vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel. And we're gonna decide, are we gonna keep the first two consonants together or perhaps the second two? In this word, MP is a frequently seen blend, so we're gonna keep that together. So now we have underlined, or excuse me, dotted our vowels and we've divided between the, the consonants that we chose and we end up with two closed syllables. More words to read and divide. Now let's get into open syllables. Open syllables usually have long vowels, but as we know, we could probably see a schwa there. And occasionally we might end up with a closed syllable with a short vowel. But right now let's say that they usually have long vowels and the vowel is at the end of a syllable. A syllable can be just one letter, but it would be a vowel. So using the chips again, we're gonna plop the consonant on the other side of the vowels. We're gonna pull it down. They're gonna say te, ti, tai, to, tu, tai. Did you notice how the U said oo? If you haven't taught this yet, now would be a good time. I would definitely teach U as oo to your students. So we cannot say t you. We don't say to you. We say to. So right now, I want to talk about vowel, consonant, vowel. This is a prime time to mention that this is not a perfect science. Syllable division is not perfect. What it is, is it's fabulous for teaching kids how to divide words at the beginning. Once they get really good with it, that's when they're going to encounter the really weird words that are going to divide kind of strangely. But at that point, they've got it figured out and they're going to be able to sound the words out. I guarantee it. So usually when we see vowel, consonant, vowel, and we're going to divide after the vowel. 
there's more of those words than there are the others, I would try that way first. So let's look at this division type with just open syllables. So vowel, consonant vowel, we're going to divide after the vowel, leaving us with two open syllables. More word lists for them to divide and read. And now we're going to see vowel, consonant, vowel with two closed syllables. This time we're dividing after the consonant. And vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel, we're going to see with a closed syllable and an open syllable this time. So we have vowel, consonant, vowel with open and closed syllables. Let's add vowel, consonant, e to the mix, silent e. Now there's six types of silent e syllable types. Well, they're not syllable types. There's six types of vowel consonant e's inside of the VCE syllable type. Let's look at those and see how we're going to label. We're going to start by finding the vowels. And in this particular case, the student's going to notice that this is a vowel consonant e. So we know that that vowel at the end there is not going to have a sound. So let's divide vowel, consonant, vowel. We end up with a closed syllable and a silent e syllable. This is our first look at prefixes and roots being divided morphologically. So we can label them if we want to. However, we don't have to because the student right now is going to be able to see that we have a prefix that they know and a root that they may or may not know, which if they don't know, it's a good time to teach it. So in meaning in, and spire meaning to breathe in life. So we could say to breathe in, because we usually go from the back end when we do morphological division. Okay, the word quagmire has a lot of vowels in it. But the U is not a vowel at all. It's working as a consonant blend. I know that's kind of controversial to say that, but it's not a vowel in this particular situation. It's only there to make the qua sound. So after labeling the vowels, we're going to see that we have a silent E syllable type at that end. And where are we going to divide? We're going to divide between the two consonants, ending up with quag and mire. Another silent E incident would be in the word distance, where we see the E's job right there now is to tell you that the C is going to have a soft sound. It has nothing to do with making the vowel long, but it is a silent E syllable type. So we're going to label it with an E, and we're going to divide between the two consonants. And here we're dividing between the two consonants with a silent E syllable type, the A-G-E saying idge. Labeling our vowels again, we're going to see that words do not end in V in English, so therefore we have the E at the end, making it a silent E syllable type. All right, lots of words to read. Read and divide, and just have the students do this over and over till it just becomes completely automatic. Let's look at vowel pairs. We're going to label vowel pairs with VP. Sometimes you call them vowel teams. It doesn't matter. Just don't call them double vowels. Double vowels only appear, um, apply to two vowels that are exactly the same. So EE and OO would be a double vowel. Now we're going to start by labeling the vowels again. And we're going to see that we know that OI is a vowel pair that we're familiar with. We know that we're not going to divide between it and we're going to keep those together. So after labeling the vowels, we're going to decide that we're going to divide after the S. We could divide before the S. It would still say poison. I said poison, which really doesn't matter. We end up with the same word as long as the child is um, pronouncing the OI together. I don't think you're going to have a problem. Now we've got monsoon. Again, we divided um, between the two consonants because that's the pattern that we have. 
we have three vowels, but the OO are together, so we're going to just have two syllables. Alrighty, have them divide some more. Choose your favorite word book or word list and have them go to town. Now we have our controls. So our controls sometimes called our colored vowels. They're followed, their vowels followed by an R or perhaps a vowel pair followed by an R. So vowel consonant consonant vowel applies with this division. After marking the vowels, the student sees that they are both R controlled syllables, so they label them with R controls. Now, how about if we divide it morphologically? We're not labeling it at all. This time we're just the student is seeing that there's an ER suffix that they know. So now we're going to cut off the ER. We see we've got a base word and a suffix. And now we've got some more R controls that we can divide away with. Consonant LE. Consonant LE, it's great for them to learn to be able to say bocal, do, fo, go, po, to, zo. Why? Because those are the only consonants that we use the consonant LE with. Otherwise, it's going to be AL, EL, IL. So this is how I do it. And I think people have other ways to do it, but I found this to be the easiest. So I have a student look at the word. If the word ends in an LE, I have them count back three. One, two, three, divide. Now we're left with a closed syllable and a consonant LE syllable. After one, two, three, divide here, we get an open syllable and a consonant LE syllable. One, two, three, divide again. R controlled, consonant LE. As you can see, if we count back one, two, three, we're always left with the syllable that we have to decide if it's R controlled, closed, opened, or um, never vowel consonant E, right? So now, why is it important for students to do this? I think it works out so great when they're reading words so that they, when they encounter the word trifle, it's not triffle. Or when you're dictating to them and they write the word triffle after you've dictated trifle, if you ask them to divide that word immediately, their word that they made the incorrect spelling of, they'll see right away, oh, the word's trifle. I need an open syllable and I've created a closed syllable. The error correction with consonant LE words becomes so much easier once they get the hang of dividing these words. I think nonsense words are fabulous, fabulous, fabulous for doing consonant LE. Uh, that way you really understand if they've got a strong grasp of their syllable types. The last one is vowel-vowel division. So we're dividing between two vowels. Sometimes we're actually dividing between vowels that we see as vowel pairs, but as the student, you wouldn't teach this syllable division right away. You would teach this after you've taught all the other ones or when the student is, is running into a lot of words with vowel-vowel division. So it's gonna become a little bit more obvious to them. So let's look at a few of these words. Poet. So OE usually occurs at the end of a word, so it's going to be pretty obvious to them that we're going to divide between the two vowels here. We get an open syllable and a closed syllable. Diet. IE definitely is a vowel pair that we know, but in this word, it, the word isn't dite or deet. We're going to tell them if they read that, we'd say, how about if we try vowel-vowel division and we divide between the two vowels? They certainly have encountered the word diet before. So I would go along with this. This is also a wonderful opportunity for you to now talk about words that have I saying E. We have a ton of vowel vowel division words where the I is saying E. All right, so we talked a little bit about morphological division before, but this is a fabulous tool. So morphological division, if you're teaching your students word meanings, they can divide words so much easier just because they have knowledge of these um, suffixes, prefixes, and roots. So ab, duct, we divided, 
duct between the prefix and the root, duct meaning to lead and ab meaning away. If somebody is abducted, they're being led away. So what do I do with the extra long word? How do I divide that? Using the word multisensory, you can see that I divide both at the top and at the bottom. This doesn't happen all at one time. So I start off with the first vowel. I ask my students, first of all, find all the vowels. So they've found all the vowels. And right now there's five vowels, so there's probably going to be five syllables. So let's start with our first syllable division. Vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel. They stop at the vowel. So what's the pattern? Divide between the two consonants. Fantastic. So now we're going to drop down. We're going to start with the vowel, the last vowel that we just left off at. We're going to divide underneath it. We get vowel, consonant, vowel. I'm going to divide after the vowel. And then I'm going to jump up and I'm going to see that my next pattern is going to be vowel, consonant, consonant, and I have an R controlled there. So I've actually, this time, I put the little R in there so that they can see it. So where am I going to divide? Between the two consonants. So I have a sen. Then I get the next thing going on here. I'm going to start again. And I've got an R controlled there. So I'm going to label my vowel. And I could have put a vowel underneath there, which I probably should have done, and did a vowel and an R, and then divided after that consonant. And so I get open syllable. Why? A lot of times with kids that are actually dividing these words, they don't even need to get to the end of the word and they figured it out. So they might have looked at the word and, and have pro started pronouncing it moo to, to, and you say divide and they start dividing and they're saying multi, oh, they go multi sensory and boom, they've got the word. So often they don't even get to the end of the syllable division. All right, there's tons of activities available. Um, out there for you to do with syllable types and syllable division. I love using nonsense words, um, games galore. There's tons of games on the market that you can use. Uh, always word lists. Um, use your chips again and do manipulation of sounds um, at the syllable level. It's great phonological awareness tasks. And then of course worksheets. Um, just as always, you know, buyer beware. Sometimes worksheets aren't exactly what you are looking for, but if you know how to teach, you can um, discern what's on the market that's going to work for you and what isn't. So thank you so much for viewing this tutorial. If it was helpful, share it. Um, if there's things about it that you didn't find um, conducive with what you do or you have questions about it, absolutely reach out to me. Um, I put together a little packet of syllable types. I've used some of the materials that I showed you on this video. Um, that you can download for your own use. So check that out. And once again, thanks for stopping by.